who sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake and also knows everything else you do because he's part of a global network of surveillance assets? Find out next on Joke Fuse. Yeah, welcome to Junk Food, the podcast about junk food, where we rate and review mystery treats to determine which one will be the undisputed champion of snacks. I'm your host, Mike. Alongside me, as always, Alyssa. Hey, Dad. Hey, Liz. So, can you tell me what Santa's favorite music is? What Santa's favorite music is? I mean, it's got to be Christmas carols, right? No. No? What is it? R-r-r-r-rap. R-r-r-r- <laughs> Rap. Oh, like wrapping presents. Yes. Like Christmas wrapping. Yes. Oh, boy. That's not one of our best ones. The deck. The halls. Oh, boy. (laughs) Well, that was a dad joke, a joke you tell to your dad. If you'd like to submit a dad joke for Alyssa to tell me on the show, you can send it us to us. You can send it in to us via Twitter at JunkFeudPod or via email to JunkFeudPod at gmail.com. Liz. Yeah. Welcome back once again to the world's yeetest podcast and ho, ho, whoa. Merry Snacksmas. Merry Snacksmas, Liz. And welcome to week three of the Junk Feud Holiday Snacktacular. It's the most hungerful time of the year, Alyssa. It's the most hungerful time of the year. Yeah, and it's the holidays, so it's a time when we give thanks for all the good things in our lives, right? Yep. Yeah, we remember all the good things that happened this year. Here's something good. That happened to a junk feud favorite list. You remember Tariq, the corn kid. Yeah. It's corn. It's corn. Yeah, he's got a uh, he's got a partnership with Green Giant Vegetables now. He's making corn? He, well, he's not making the corn, but he's making food with their canned corn. I'm I'm happy for him. That's pretty exciting. Good job, Tariq. Yeah, there's like commercials and a little cooking show that he's on. That's so funny. <laughs> he's got the juice. It's got the juice. Hey, here's a thing. I'm not thankful for this. What? There's a novelty store in Seattle, Washington. It's called Archie McPhee. They sell like uh, rubber chickens and whoopee cushions, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff I am thankful for. My grandpa loved novelty gags. He instilled in me a great adoration for that kind of junk. I have, Alyssa, a rubber chicken. Where is it? Uh, it's put away. It's in a box in the garage somewhere. Can we get it out? Maybe someday. Mom doesn't really like stuff like that hanging air around the house. Who knew? What a surprise. Yeah, I know. But listen, if you can buy it at South of the Border, I want it. That's the kind of junk that I like to have in my life. Let's get like a hundred. Like a hundred rubber chickens? And then we'll just lay down on them and then we'll hear mom in depression. What? <laughs> Would that be like one of those uh, silly YouTube challenges? I fill my entire house with rubber chickens. Click the button to like this video. If you don't know how to braid, hit that follow button. Yeah, that sounds like a Fargle butt challenge. <laughs> Liz. What? Here's some novelty junk that I cannot get behind. What? At, at Archie McPhee in Seattle, Washington, they have special candy canes this year for the holidays. Ooh. They have, Liz, a Caesar salad candy cane. You just, they just ruined the entire point of a sweet. Yeah, that sounds pretty gross, doesn't it? They say it's like uh, salty and creamy. It tastes a little bit like anchovies. Ew. I don't like it. What do you think about that, aside from just saying ooh? Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't think so. You know what I am in the mood for, though? What? It is week three of the Holiday Snacktacular, which means for us, it's that time of the year when we start making Christmas cookies. Cookies. It's one of my favorite family traditions that we have, making cookies at the holidays. I do most of the baking in the house. It's something I learned from grandma, from my mom. She still makes all the cookies in her house at holiday time. She makes a lot of great cookies. Her chocolate chip cookies are among my favorite things in the world. They are very small and very crunchy. Now, we make bigger, chewier chocolate chip cookies now, but when I grew up, the small, crunchy cookies that she would make were the ones that I liked the best. I eat a big handful of them every year around Christmas. I like the big, chewy, salty ones you make. Yeah, those are just one of like, 20 different types of cookies that we've been making lately. Last year, we had so many cookie recipes in our house that I had to use a spreadsheet to track all of the different recipes and all of the different quantities of ingredients so that I could be sure that I would buy like enough sticks of butter or enough eggs or things like that. What's your favorite type, except for those? Oh man, like of all time? Yeah. Well, grandma's cut out sugar cookies are amazing. Those are like the really thin crispy ones that we decorate, put the sugar on top of. Yeah. Yeah, those are awesome. 
Um, I also like, I've been making this recipe from Bon Appetit magazine from Rick Martinez, the sugar man. It's a brown butter chocolate chip Heath bar cookie. And those are like out of this world. Really? Yeah. What are some of your uh, favorite Christmas cookies, Liz? Um, I like those big, I call them lemon cookies every time. Lemon cookies? Like I, they're like shaped like different things. Like they're really big. Really big and shaped like different things. They're like really thin, like a light yellow. Right, you're talking about the ones I was just talking about, the cut out sugar cookies, the ones we decorate, right? No. They're shaped like different things because we use cookie cutters for them? No, they're like... No, you're thinking of something else. They're like very thin, Uh huh. and it's like they're snowflake shaped. Oh, pitzels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pitzels are so good. I love those. Yeah, they're definitely not lemon, at least not the ones that we make. We put a little bit of anise seed or anise oil in them, which is like uh, like a licorice flavor almost. They just remind me of lemon because of the color, so I just kind of like refer to that. Oh, that makes sense. You know what? Recently, I've, it's not part of the recipe that I grew up making, but recently we've been putting a little bit of vanilla in them to sort of give them a, a rounder, softer flavor. That's pretty good, huh? Yeah. And you know what that reminds me of, Liz? What? That reminds me of this week's snack. Hey. Up next on Junk Feud, it's Elf on the Shelf, North Pole, Snow Cream with Marshmallows cereal. Oh boy, that was a mouthful. Liz? What? What do you know about Elf on the Shelf, North Pole, Snow Cream with Marshmallows cereal? <laughs> I know that it's supposed to like bake your mouth cold. Yeah, it's got this weird cooling sensation it says on the box. And we're going to get into that in just a moment because Elf on the Shelf North Pole Snow Cream with Marshmallow Cereal is a new cereal that's been released as part of a collaboration between Kellogg's and the Elf on the Shelf brand for 2022. Slay. Slay. Oh, boy. <laughs> in case you were wondering, here's the ad copy for it. It says it is a flurry of frosted star pieces and mini marshmallows. Each spoonful will remind you of creamy vanilla ice cream. It's like taking a bite out of a sweet and tasty snowball. Now, I've never eaten a sweet and tasty snowball. Have you? Well, I mean, I've eaten snow. Sure. You, you taste the snow when you go outside. You pick up a handful and try it, but it doesn't taste like sweet and tasty, at least not any of the snow I've ever had. Well, me and, me and Ella a while ago, we sat outside on her trampoline and she had like you know how what people make like snow cones with uh -huh. like the different like squirt bottles and flavor? Yeah, yeah. She got like a big kit of those. So we sat outside on her trampoline. It was all snow. Just took like a bunch of snowballs. We just held them and like flavored them and just ate them. Oh, that sounds really gross. Uh, <laughs> how was it? It was good. Here's a question for you because what? you brought it up already. When you were eating the cold snow, did it make your mouth cold? Did it make it like numb and tingly? Did it have a cooling sensation? Yes. Yes. Well, here's what the Elf on the Shelf brand cereal says about this year's version, the snow cream cereal, the North Pole snow cream cereal. It claims to have a magical cooling sensation, it says on the box, that makes your mouth cold while you eat it. They say this is due to the inclusion of a slow release flavor ingredient. What is that? Well, see, when I think of like a cooling sensation that's part of a flavor. I think of like mint or menthol, something like that. Like uh, yeah. if you had a like a very menthol, like a mentholated cough drop, for example, or like a stick oh. of minty gum or toothpaste, like that sort of cooling sensation. Like, you know, if you drink something that's really, really, really cold and then you suck air in through your teeth like that. Yeah. Or like if you like, uh, oh my goodness, don't know how to like put it. Um, so. If you were to get one of those like gross yellow cough drops <laughs> and it like burns. Here. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. Or maybe like like a brain freeze if you have, um, I get these all the time with the grape slush from Sonic because they're so good and I drink them too fast and I get a complete brain freeze. Like I'm, I'm just out of commission for at least a minute and a half after that. Oh. Oh, or maybe something like um, we have these down in the cabinet downstairs. And I use them when we make Chinese food at home. Szechuan peppercorns, Liz. I don't know what that is. A Szechuan peppercorn is a type of uh, like dried peppercorn, but they give you this tingly, numbing sensation in your mouth when you eat them. That's kind of what I think about when somebody says a magical cooling sensation, like something minty or something super cold or like that tingly, numbing sensation from Szechuan peppercorns. Oh, that was a lot. Yeah, it was. Well, here's the thing. There is actually a magical cooling ingredient 
in the North Pole Snow Cream cereal this year. And we'll talk about it when we get to Alyssa reading the ingredients, my favorite part of the show, but it looks like this. What? The magical formula relies on something called calcium carbonate. What's that? Well, it's food grade limestone, uh, essentially. It's something that's taken as a dietary supplement for like healthy bones if you don't get enough calcium in your diet, but also less. It's used as an antacid. It's the active ingredient in Tums. Oh, like yeah. the good like medicine? Yeah, those little uh, chalky tablets that you can take if your tummy is upset. I love thing. those. You love Tums? You guys have the um, smoothie flavors, I believe, right? I think they're just like fruit flavors. Like fruit and fruit smoothie flavors, yeah. In fact... Tums also, Alyssa, has a Chewy Bites cooling sensation antacid tablet that they sell that has the same active ingredient, which is calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. Yeah, this is the part of this snack that I'm looking forward to the most to see how much of an active cooling sensation there actually is in North Pole snow cream cereal. Well, find out next on Jumpy. <laughs> Great job. That's my job. Hey, here's, uh, here's something else that might also be cooled by calcium carbonate, Alyssa. The Earth. Like the our Earth. planet, yeah. Like planet, planet Earth? Yeah, like planet, planet Earth, the only one, the one and only. The planet, planet, planet Earth. Planet, planet, planet Earth, the three times planet of the year, planet Earth. Okay. <laughs> There's this 2018 article in Nature magazine. It's a, like a science journal. It described a method to use calcium carbonate in a solar geoengineering scheme to inject particles into the stratosphere list that would reflect some solar energy. It's kind of like what happens when a volcano erupts and there's a big cloud in the sky and it cools the earth off a little bit. What is geoengineering? Geoengineering is a way to change the parameters of our ecosystem by uh, doing little things that have big differences. Like in this case, injecting microparticles of calcium carbonate into the stratosphere. You might have heard of things like cloud seeding, for example, to make it rain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a way to like manipulate the weather a little bit. Or like make it rain with the money. Make it rain. Uh, no, completely different thing. <laughs> <laughs> down, at, uh, down at Purdue University, shout out to our cousin Bree, a boilermaker down there. They're also making a uh, calcium carbonate-based paint that helps to keep buildings cool, like literally cool. If you paint the sides of the building with this paint, it will help reduce solar loading and keep them cool. So like black makes it hot. So like what does this do? Makes it just cold? Yeah, it's like a white paint with calcium carbonate embedded in it. Hmm. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Here's something else that's neat, Alyssa. There is a long-running relationship between the Elf on the Shelf and Kellogg's, the cereal company. What? Well, every year since 2018, I believe, Elf on the Shelf and Kellogg's have been partnering to release a new Elf on the Shelf breakfast cereal. Don't they already have like four? Yeah, there's four different versions, and each year they release a new one. This year's, the North Pole Snow Cream Cereal with Marshmallows, is a Walmart exclusive. That means it's the only place that you can get it. Walmart exclusive. Walmart exclusive. And then two of the most recent versions of the cereal, the hot cocoa cereal with marshmallow and the sugar cookie cereal with marshmallows are also back this year. You can pick them up at like grocery stores uh, across the US and Canada. Oh, can we go to Canada? Can we go to Canada? Like right now? No. Yeah. I mean, we're in the middle of a show. We probably can't go right now. Maybe someday. How about after the show? Like, to, like tonight, drive up to Canada? No, that would be too far of a drive. But wait, you can't drive to Canada. Yeah, you definitely can drive to Canada. Wait, what? Where I do thought... you think? Uh, wait a minute. No, hold on. Where I do thought... you think Canada is? I thought you had to take a like a car and then to Maine and then like a boat to it. Well, there are some parts of Canada that are across lakes or uh, I guess if you really wanted to, you could go out across the ocean. But there are land borders with Canada, very large land borders with Canada and the United States, as a matter of fact. Oh, how far is it? How far is it to Canada? Yeah. From here? Yeah. Um, I don't you know what? You should ask your mom. She used to drive there every year for a work trip. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a few hours. Like more than eight? Mm, to some parts, sure. How about the part we would go after the show? Well, if we went to like Montreal or Niagara Falls, that's still pretty far, but not uh not terribly far. I mean, we've driven further than, than it would take for us to go to Canada. We drove fourteen hours. Yeah, that was a long trip. Okay. Segment such a rubber. Thanks, Liz. You know what? On one of those long car trips, I would have liked to have some snacks that are part of the Elf on the Shelf collaboration with other junk food manufacturers. Like, like uh, what, may I ask? Well, <laughs> it's mostly Kellogg's stuff, actually. So there are Kellogg's Nutrigrain Bright... Nutrigrain... Oh, that's tough to say, isn't it? Nutrigrain Bright... Kellogg's Nutrigrain Bites, which are like little bites of uh, breakfast bars with fruit fillings. There are 
Pop Tarts bites that are co-branded with Elf on the Shelf. And then there's Elf on the Shelf jumbo snacks, which are just larger versions of dry cereal pieces. Oh. So like it's it's all that kind of stuff. But the one cereal that has come out in the past that was based on the Elf on the Shelf was from 2020. It was called Vanilla Candy Cane Cookie Cereal with Marshmallows. Ooh. This one was not re-released this year. I'm not exactly sure why. All of these cereals are mostly the same. They are little crunchy star shapes that have some different flavorings. So initially there was the sugar cookie cereal, which just tasted like, you know, vanilla and butter. And then there was the hot cocoa cereal, which was a generic chocolate cereal with some marshmallows. And then in 2020, there was the Candy Cane Cookie Cereal. This did not review very well. One of our favorite cereal blogs, Serialistly.net, called it, and he was loath to use this descriptor, but he said it was hot garbage, Alyssa. Hot garbage. <laughs> he said the only thing about the cereal that wasn't a lie was the crunch. He said it didn't taste like vanilla or candy canes or cookies, and there were barely any marshmallows in it. Ooh, you know what's a really good candy cane flavor? Ooh, what's that? The Wendy's Frosty. Oh, yeah, that's right. We forgot to talk about it at the top of the show, but we did try the new Wendy's Peppermint Frosty, the candy it's cane flavored so Frosty. good. That was really good. I was a little skeptical list because we tried that strawberry Frosty this summer, and I would say that was, here's a word that I learned recently. Hot uh, garbage. Well, I was going to say mid. Is that a thing? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't very good, but the peppermint frosty was really delightful. I like that a lot. It tasted like a cookie with like peppermint kick at the end. Yeah, it was like a like a soft vanilla with an even softer, rounder peppermint flavor. Like peppermint can be kind of harsh; it can bite a little bit. But this was really good. I enjoyed, I like that a lot. Yeah, can we get that again soon? Sure, I think that's a good idea. How about after the show? Well, maybe when we're on our way to Canada. After the show, on our way to Canada. Canada talking about candles. Canada talking about candles on Alyssa's Candlecast. On Alyssa's Candlecast. Join us next time on our way to Canada, eating peppermint frosties for Alyssa's Candlecast. Is there a peppermint frosty candle flavor, Alyssa? I hope so. Are candles called flavored candles or are they scented candles? Scented candles. Probably scented candles, right? Well, yeah, because you're not eating the candle. Hey, you know what is definitely scented? What? I will say these cereals are well scented. The Elf on the Shelf sugar cookie cereal from 2019 was said to have smelled not exactly like a sugar cookie, but by someone trying to approximate a sugar cookie with fake vanilla and fake butter flavors. Wow. Yeah, it also did not review very well. Some of the words used to describe the sugar cookie cereal were putrid, uh, fake. Someone said they would rather eat coal straight from Santa's mines, etc. It tasted like nothing. It was nothing more than a bowl of edible merchandise. Is it merchandise good? Yeah, but you probably don't eat it, right? <laughs> yeah. I think the implication there was that somebody was just trying to sell you the Elf on the Shelf brand and not necessarily some kind of food stuff that you would actually enjoy. True. I do enjoy sugar cookies, though. I like sugar cookie flavors. We talked about this earlier. Grandma makes those cutout sugar cookies for the holidays. We've decorated those as far back as I can remember with the different color sanding sugars. They're thin and crispy. I also, though, like the big chewy sugar cookies like you can get in bulk packs from the supermarket. You've had those, right? Oh, yeah. I love those. I don't. A lot of people that I know, like, they like hate them. Well, they can be a little bit cloying. They're just very, very heavy on the butter and vanilla and sugar. They're very, very sweet. I even like those big fluffy loft house style sugar cookies. You know, the ones that have that like teeth shatteringly sweet icing on the top of them. It's like a big swirl of pink icing. And there's oh, usually some yeah. sprinkles on top. Like crumble? Yeah, exactly. So I think crumble cookies is just like an elevated version of those supermarket loft house cookies. What do you think of crumble cookies, Liz? You like them, right? I like them. It's just some of their flavors are kind of gross. Yeah. What was that one that you had that you really didn't like? Um, Was it the one we got in Florida or the one that I had? You know what? I think it was that cotton candy one that we got in Florida. Oh, yeah, that was gross. Yeah, that wasn't very good. I did like, I like the s'mores cookies that they have there. Those are good. I think I had a, like a cinnamon churro cookie there once that was all right. That wasn't bad. But yeah, I think crumble cookies are really just like a dressed up version of these supermarket sugar cookies. I'm going to say, I think they're a little bit overrated. Yeah, I think I would agree with that too. We'll probably do those on the show when it's cookie season. I think season two is cookie season. So that could be pretty soon, like Ooh. within the next few months. So next year? Yeah, that's exciting. You're here where you should be. Oh my gosh. You just can't turn it off, can you? No, it's I'm just, just too excited. All holidays, all the time. Liz, that what? sugar cookie flavor that has made its way into like cereals and candies. I like sugar cookies. I don't really care for the fake sugar cookie flavor. I know we said the uh, 
Hershey's Kisses sugar cookie flavor was not bad, but it wasn't our favorite. Yeah. There's a little bit of like fakeness to it. I like fake flavors. I mean, I like Milk Bar's take on birthday cakes. They use that clear imitation vanilla, but I don't know. Fake sugar cookie flavors and things that aren't sugar cookies, they don't Blech. work for me. Gross. Yeah, not good. But the Kellogg's collaboration with Elf on the Shelf, that does work. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think elves and holiday snacks have been part of the holiday myth since the beginning, at least the beginning of the Elf on a Shelf. There's even a page on the Elf on a Shelf website that talks about what Scout elves eat, which is mostly candies and pies and cakes and any type of sweets. And then they like mini-sized foods, I guess, because they're small. Like our Scout elves are very tiny. They like sliders, little hamburgers and tiny hot dog pups. And then uh, some of them actually like... And a shout out to your brother here, healthy snacks like fruits and vegetables. Like they, health food. Like health food. That's right. They would eat these things called snowberries, which grow exclusively near Santa's house at the North Pole. Dad, imagine a Christmas unicorn that poops out Christmas sugar cookies. Uh, okay. I'm imagining it. What is uh, this Christmas unicorn that poops out sugar cookies name? Um, how about Sandy? Sandy. Oh, that's like a summer name. Never mind. Yeah, that's kind of beachy. Although, I mean, in The Nightmare Before Christmas, they did call Santa Claus Sandy Claus, right? How about, I want to stick with an S name. Okay. So we'll do, hmm, we'll get back to that. Okay, we will get back to the S-named Christmas unicorn that poops sugar cookies right after this. But until then, Liz. What? We're going to talk about a little bit of the history of the elf on the shelf. Elf on the shelf. Yeah, this is something that we've done in our family for a while now. It's a holiday tradition. And it started in the year 2005, Alyssa, when a mother-daughter combo, a woman named Carol Ebersold and her daughter Shanda Bell, self-published a book called The Elf on the Shelf, A Christmas Tradition. And now there's an entire empire built around that holiday book and the Elf on the Shelf tradition. It falls under the corporate umbrella of a company called Loomis Stella, where Belle and her sister are co-CEOs, and the company says it has a vision to tell the stories of Santa's North Pole. Dada, I yes. know the unicorn's name now. Oh, okay, go ahead. What is it? I know it's on S name, but Noel. Noel, wow, what a seasonally appropriate name for a unicorn that poops sugar cookies. And her horn is decorated like a Christmas tree, and it lights up. Wow, I like that. Is there a little star on the top of it? Yep. Naturally. <laughs> Liz. What? We said the Elf on the Shelf debuted in 2005. What else was going on in 2005? Bella was one year old. Bella, your cousin Bella was one year old, your only temporal signpost. That's right. Yeah, that's about it. Well, here's some stuff that was going on in 2005. Hurricane Katrina hit the southern United States and flooded like 80% of New Orleans. ka -chow. Yeah, that was a big deal. Uh, here's a side note, Liz. I was living in the South at that time. I was in Arkansas. And uh, a bunch of us, the weekend after Katrina hit down in New Orleans, we piled into a truck. We drove out to a place called Picayune, Mississippi to help with the recovery effort. Picayune, Mississippi. Yeah, we spent all weekend. We were cutting trees and uh, moving them around, cleaning up debris in some neighborhoods. We were close to a Mormon church. That was our home base for the weekend. We slept on the floor. We ate cold biscuits outside for breakfast. The power was on and off intermittently. Uh, the highlight of this entire trip, if you could even call it that, was when the local KFC restaurant somehow got power and food. Nobody else did. There was nothing else open. We waited in the pickup truck for like an hour and a half in the drive through line. Uh, and then we ate buckets of chicken and drank sweet tea on the porches of all the people that we were helping to move uh, trees off their cars and homes. To this day, that was one of the finest meals I've ever had in my life. I think that was mostly out of desperation, but a big chicken thigh and a big jug of sweet tea when you've been working all day is mm, chef's kiss to that. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Mwah. Mwah. France. <laughs> also in 2005, Alyssa, North Korea proclaimed itself a nuclear state. Pope John Paul II died. Sean Paul. Not Sean Paul. He's a singer. John Paul. No, I know. I'm just saying. Oh, like, you were saying it in the... Francy accent. In the French accent. Well, John Paul was Polish. So... Uh, Do you have oh. a Polish accent at the ready? John Paul. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, sure. We'll allow that. Liz, <laughs> I have, what? if you can believe this, a Pope John Paul II pog that, if I can find it, I will take a picture of and post it to Twitter. What is that? A pog? Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Quick aside into the 1990s, Liz. Pogs were little caps that went on the tops of juice containers for pineapple, orange, guava juice. They were like these little cardboard caps. But in Hawaii, where the 
juice was popular and the pogs were on top of the containers, a game started called pogs where you would take a stack of those and you would stack them up as high as you could. And then you would take a thing called a slammer, which was like a little disc that was made of metal or plastic. And you would hit the stack of pogs with the slammer and whichever ones you flipped over, you got to keep and people would like collect them and trade them like they were baseball cards and then play the game with them. I had a whole stack of pogs. I probably still have a whole stack of pogs somewhere. Everything that you refer to is about baseball. Uh, not everything, but many things, sure. <laughs> Mostly everything. Okay, here's something that's not about baseball. In 2005, the first ever video was uploaded to YouTube. How about that? Like the grasshoppers. <laughs> the grasshoppers, the baseball team that I used to play on, does have videos on YouTube. But the first ever YouTube video was about a trip to a zoo, I believe. Oh. Revenge of the Sith, the Star Wars movie, was still in theaters. King Daka opened at Six Flags Great Adventure in New Jersey. That was the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster at the time. And then, Alyssa, uh, Microsoft released the Xbox 360 in 2005. 360? Xbox does it, like, 360. Rotate? You know what? That's a good question. I don't know exactly what they were thinking. I guess the idea was that it was going to be a revolution in gaming. Oh. Yeah. When I went to Six Flags, they didn't. The King to Call like broke down and we couldn't go on it. Yeah, that roller coaster is notorious for having technical difficulties. What did we say? Technical difficulties? Oh, yeah. Technical difficulties. We'll yeah. be right back after this. Act. That's right. It's also notorious for uh, failing on the launch because it has a, it has a magnetic induction launch or a, like a blast launch at the beginning of the ride. And then there's a very, very steep incline it goes up to the top and then it comes right back down the other side. But sometimes it doesn't launch fast enough or the weather conditions are not right for it to go all the way over the hump. And sometimes it'll blast off, go like halfway or three quarters of the way up the incline and then fall right back down. Do they let you go again? Yeah, you got to keep going until you get over the hump. Oh my goodness. I think the time we were there, it couldn't make it over like the, the hump. Uh -huh. So they did it like five times and every time they got closer and then they just, it just stopped working. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Hey, here's something that has worked, Alyssa. What? The Elf on the Shelf tradition. It's like a simple game of hide and seek. That's at least how the company describes it. It fills in some of the blanks in the Santa Claus mythology. I've always wondered, of course, how Santa knew who was naughty or nice and how to make his list that he checked twice. Does that make sense? Like he can't be everywhere at once. He has some magic, right? But it's limited. He's watching. Yeah. Well, it turns out he has some help watching you. Yeah. There are these things called scout elves, and they are adopted into families during the holiday season. They watch the families, see what they're doing, and then they fly back to the North Pole every night. They report back on those families to Santa Claus, and then they fly back to the family's homes where occasionally they will get into mischief. And then you have to wake up and find the elves in the morning and see what they've been up to. Do you remember the year when our elves, I mean last year, the elves went into quarantine in a plastic bag and hung from our ceiling. Oh, I do remember that. Well, they wanted to make sure that uh, they weren't going to get anybody sick during the pandemic. And it turns out, of course, that the Elf on the Shelf company, Lumistella, sent out some press releases and said, hey, listen, the elves are not human, so they can't get human diseases. So you don't have to worry about them getting COVID or making anybody sick. I guess our elves are germaphobes. Uh, oh, our, our elves are definitely not germaphobes, which you're going to tell <laughs> everybody about in a moment. Uh, there are male and female elves. They have lots of different looks. There are these things called elf pets. They have other companions now that are called elf mates. They have jobs at the North Pole, Alyssa. There is a chef elf and a toy maker elf and a cobbler elf. Dada, they have new baby elves. There are baby elves? We need those. Oh my goodness. What would our baby elf be called? No, there's like eight. There's eight baby elves? Yeah. Uh, well, I, don't, I definitely don't think that our elves are going to have eight babies. Well, our elves are siblings, so they're definitely not going to have eight babies. Well, neither of them are going to have any babies with anyone because they're too busy. <laughs> they're too busy being in quarantine. So Liz, aside from our elves being sometimes naughty and sometimes putting themselves in quarantine, there are some rules to the scout elves. Do you, uh, do you remember what the rules are for scout elves? Don't touch them. Don't touch them. That's right. Or they lose their magic or they and lose then they their get magic. hurt. That's right. We definitely don't want to hurt them. What else? There are two other rules. I don't know. So just like another holiday themed creature list, the Mogwai, you know what a Mogwai is, right? A Mogwai from Gremlins. Gizmo was a Mogwai. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So both have rules that you have to follow if you want to avoid disaster with them. Mogwai rules are uh, no sunlight. Don't get them wet. Don't feed them after midnight. Scout elf rules. Like you said, number one, don't touch them. 
Number two, they don't taw. And then number three, they have to return to the North Pole on Christmas Eve every year. Sadly. Sadly, yeah. They don't get to spend the whole year with us. I know. And less since their inception in 2005, the tradition has become an intellectual property powerhouse. There are TV and Netflix specials. There are collaborations with other companies. We talked about Kellogg's already. There are multiple product lines across a number of different verticals. The book, The Elf on the Shelf, A Christmas Tradition, was a number one bestseller and has been for years. They had a float in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 2012. It is an enormous holiday industrial complex. Yeah. And guess what? What? That means there are other versions too. Maybe not officially sanctioned by the company, but there are some interesting ones. Like? Well, there's one called the Mensch on the Bench, which is now the official mascot of the Israeli national baseball team. Hey, there's something about baseball. What's the Mensch on the Bench? The Mensch on the Bench. A Mensch is like a really cool dude in Yiddish. Oh. Yeah. uh, He's the official mascot of the Israeli national baseball team, the Mensch on the Bench. He sits on the bench with them. Oh. There's Snoop on a Stoop. What's that? It's a Snoop Dogg Scout Elf. Oh. And there's a new one very recently called Reindeer in Here. It's a little stuffed reindeer. His antlers are uh, mismatched, and he stays with the family over the holiday season, and he teaches kids that it's okay to be different. Oh. Yeah, there's an animated special that premiered just a few weeks ago. Okay. Liz. Yeah. We don't have any of those alternative scout elves, but we do have our own elf family. Yeah. Why don't you tell me about them? Um, so we, can I just name them? Sure, go ahead. We have Oodles, Trixie, Dash, Cooper. And Moonlight. Yeah, and Cooper, Dash, and Moonlight are not elves. They are what? Animals. Animals. They're elf pets. Cooper is... A doggy. A St. Bernard. And Dash is... A reindeer. Reindeer. And Moonlight is... A wolf. She's an arctic fox. A fox. Very good. But they... You can touch them. You just can't touch their hearts. That's right. You can touch the elf pets. You can cuddle them, but they have a special little heart charm that you can't touch because that's where their magic is stored. Can you tell me, Alyssa, the history of our elf family? How did they come to be with us? Um, well, I, our first elf was Oodles. Uh Uh-huh. And then the next year, um, he brought Trixie. Which is his sister, you said. Yes. Okay. Um, and then was it Dash or Cooper next? You or did what? Dash and Cooper come at the same time? I think Dash and Cooper might have come around the same time. Yeah, and then Moonlight came was a very new addition to our family. Moonlight is the baby, that's right. Yeah. Liz, I didn't have any Skelt Elves when I was a kid, obviously, because they hadn't come out from the North Pole yet in 2005. I was already grown by then. Yeah. And it's a good thing, too. I can't imagine the mischief that <laughs> house elves would have gotten into in a house with me and Uncle Matt and Uncle Pat. That would have been a disaster. One year... Oodles decided to lay inside of a light, and then he burned a hole in his butt. Yeah, he has a scar on his leg. It's not on his (laughs) butt. He has a scar on his leg. He was burned by a light bulb one year because he was being very mischievous. That was really funny. What are are some of our other favorite elf hijinks lists? Um, Oodles on a toilet. Yes, sometimes Oodles has a tiny little toilet that's all his own, and sometimes we go in in the morning and he's reading the elf paper sitting on the elf toilet. That's right. Or when... Dash, Cooper, and Moonlight poop in the sink. Yeah, that we sometimes come downstairs and there are little chocolate chip turds in the, in the bathroom sink. And then when Oodles cooks his friends on the stove. That's right. Oodles was wearing a chef hat, I think, two years ago, and he put all of his friends into a saucier and had them on, on top of the burner on the <laughs> stove. That was very naughty. Oh, the sugar or flour... Snow angels. Yeah, they dump sugar all over the counter and then make snow angels, and your mother gets very, very upset about that. (laughs) And then the marshmallow jacuzzi. That's right. One time I came downstairs and Oodles and Trixie were sitting inside of a molcajete, like a a mortar and pestle that we have for making guacamole, and the whole thing was filled up with marshmallows, and they were treating it like it was a little spa. Yeah, some of those marshmallows were yellow, by the way. Ew, gross. That was really funny. That's disgusting. (laughs) You know what else was really funny about the Elf on the Shelf list? What? In 2016, there was a user on social network or social media website, I guess you could call it, Tumblr. Have you ever heard of Tumblr? No. Mm, it's a bit before your time, I think. So anyway, this Tumblr user posted a picture of a Pokemon trainer in a garbage can and said, well, you have heard of the Elf on the Shelf. Now get ready for Ash in the Trash. Oh. Yeah, it became a meme. It blew up on Reddit. It went viral. 
There were all sorts of things. You've heard of the elf on the shelf, now get ready for Shrek on a deck, or Waluigi on a squeegee, or Link from Legend of Zelda in the sink, or Lil Wayne on a plane, Tom and Jerry on a dictionary, Obama on a llama. There were some good ones. Can you think of any? I don't know. Can you think of any? Well, we had Shrek on the deck. We could have Peck on the deck. No, that's too basic. Too basic? Ted on the bed. Ted on the bed? Um, Or on a shed? Um, Chase on Chase at the Place. Chase at the Place. Or Dad, um, bad, sad, little lad. Dad being a little lad. <laughs> that doesn't count. It has to be on something. <laughs> I could be I could be sitting on the little lad's shoulders, like the little lad that likes berries and cream. Yeah. That would be a good one. That's like combining two memes together. I'm the little lad. This... I like berries and cream. Oh, boy. Do the little lad dance. Could you imagine coming downstairs in the morning and seeing Oodles and Trixie doing the little lad dance? <laughs> oh my goodness. Remember when Oodles fell off the train and then we have to pick him up? Oh, and we had to use tongs from the kitchen because we can't touch him. Because Oodles was being a naughty elf and decided to fall off a train. Yeah. So Liz, some of those uh, elf on the shelf mean names were pretty good. I like Obama on a llama. That's pretty good. Obama on a llama. Here's one that a lot of people don't like, Alyssa. What? The Narc in the Dark. What's that? Well, the Narc in the Dark is a derogatory name to refer to the elf on the shelf because some people say that scout elves are not that good. In fact. Not everyone loves scout elves, and they say that they are part of a surveillance state apparatus, Alyssa. Oh. Yeah, in 2014, the Washington Post published an article that quoted a digital technology professor named Laura Pinto. She said the elf on the shelf was a, get this, this is a good quote, a capillary form of power that normalizes the voluntary surrender of privacy, teaching young people to blindly accept panoptic surveillance and reify hegemonic power. Oh. Any words in there that you know? Power. Yeah, power. That's a good one. Sure. Young people. Young people. Very good. Privacy. Privacy. So that's kind of the key behind this. The idea came from a paper that she co-authored in a Canadian policy journal that was likening the scout elves all-seeing power as similar to Jeremy Bentham's 18th century surveillance prison design called the Panopticon. And the same year, there was an article online claiming that the elf on the shelf started as a program at the NSA to surveil people. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't true, actually. There were so many people that believed this satirical article that Snopes had to uh, publish a debunking fact check about it. So in the Christmas Chronicles, Uh they put blindfold on their elf. Oh, because they were doing something that they didn't want Santa to see. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So that makes sense because there's a lot of people that think that the elves are normalizing the surveillance state for little kids and teaching them that... It's okay if people are spying on them all the time and that they should alter their behavior if they think they're being watched. Oh. Salon.com called it an Orwellian nightmare. The ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, says that families see this as just another fun thing, but it sends these messages to children about surveillance by authorities that's unhealthy. Oh. The Atlantic, a popular web magazine, called it the greatest fraud ever perpetrated against children. Oh. I, yeah, I think that's a bit hyperbolic. I mean, there were there are child labor laws for a reason. I think that would be a maybe a greater fraud perpe- perpetrated against children, for example. This is just like ruining the Christmas spirit. Well, it's not really an issue for you and your brother. <laughs> you guys are good even when nobody's watching you. But it could be a problem for other people um, in the real world, Alyssa. Snitches get stitches, but in the world of the elf on the shelf, they get marshmallows. <laughs> Chase got stitches? He did. He did. Chase got a stitch in his cheek. I bet he would be happy to tell everybody about that story someday on Health Feud. Yeah. Here's here's the thing, kids. Do not fall down a hill. <laughs> That's a great life lesson there, Liz. Don't fall down a hill and smash into your neighbor's tire. Here's another good life lesson. I think I should do a segment switcher upper here. Okay. Sometimes we quote Serious Eats serial reviewer and uh, New York Times columnist Jamel Bowie. He's... um. He's always on, uh, not always, he's very frequently on Doughboys, the podcast that we like that you're not allowed to listen to. I listen to it anyway, though. Well, here's what Jamel Bowie says about the elf on the shelf. He says, I should say from the jump that I have an ideological problem with the entire idea of the elf on the shelf. I think it is unconscionable to subject children to imaginary surveillance for the sake of altering their behavior. It's basically training them to live in a police state. It's bad. You know what else he said was bad? What? The elf on the shelf sugar cookie cereal. He said he didn't like it at all. Oh. 
That like, really, that's really sad. I know. Nevertheless, Liz, we love our elves. We love Oodles and Trixie and Cooper and Dash and Moonlight. You look forward to their appearance every year. It's one of your favorite parts of the holidays. I wish I could hug them, but I can't. Well, maybe someday we'll see. Oh. Maybe the rules will change someday. Maybe. You never know. You never know. But that does give you something to look forward to, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what else I look forward to? Alyssa reads the ingredients. My favorite part of the show, Alyssa reads the ingredients. Are you ready? I don't know about this one. (laughs) You can do it, I believe. Okay. Go Uh, ahead. Let's zoom in here. Okay. And now for my favorite part of the show, Alyssa reads the ingredients. Ready? (laughs) Corn flour blend, whole grain yellow corn flour, de-germinated? De-germinated. De-germinated. Yellow corn flour, sugar, marshmallows, sugar, corn syrup, modified food starch, gelatin, natural flavor, wheat flour, whole grain oat flour, oat fiber contains 2% or less of soluble corn fiber, salt, natural and artificial flavor, calcium carbonate, blue 1, red 40, yellow 6, BHT for freshness, vitamins and minerals, iron, niacin, Niacinamide. Niacinamide? Sure. Sure. Vitamin B6. Pyridoxide. 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 Hydro. Oh my goodness. Hydrochloride. Right? Yep. Vitamin B2. This one. Every time. Riboflavin? Sure. Okay. Vitamin B1. (laughs) Diamond hydro. Hydrochloride. Um, Folic acid. D, vitamin D3, vitamin B12. Great job. Liz. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. And the number two ingredient is sugar, and the number three ingredient is marshmallows. And then corn syrup. Yeah. That should tell you everything that you need to know about this cereal. You Don't do eat see, it. <laughs> well, we'll find out in a moment. Uh, you do see the inclusion of calcium carbonate in there, which we talked about earlier, which is responsible for the magical cooling sensation, which we're going to see if it actually has. And you know how we do that? Let's get to the rules of the game. Yeah, by playing the game, let's get to the rules of the game. Junk Feud is a culinary clash to see which treat will be crowned the undisputed champion of snacks. It's a King of the Mountain-style battle in which the reigning champ takes on a new challenger each week to see which snack reigns supreme. Liss. What? The reigning defending undisputed champion of holiday snacks, the holder of the Kringle Cup, is Bold Chex Mix. Bold Chex Mix. Bold Chex Mix. Bold Chex Mix is really good. This cereal has an uphill battle ahead of it. I had Chex Mix for as a snack in my lunch today. That's right. As well, you should have. And now we will introduce our challenger. Liz, this week we are trying the Elf on the Shelf North Pole Snow Cream Cereal with Marshmallows. Yeah. We are not going to bother with any of the other Elf cereals. The reviews weren't encouraging enough, and they all seem like they're variations on a theme anyway. Yeah. Like super sweet star-shaped cereal with marshmallows. So we'll try the new one from this year. But they're not just stars, they have a hole in the middle. Yeah, these are extruded corn stars with a hole in the middle, that's right. That's my favorite part. There are no run-ins today, this is a straight-up one-on-one fight to the finish between this cereal and Bold Chex Mix, which means, Liz... What? It's crunch time! Crunch time! We rate our snacks using a tier list from sprinkles to fun dip. Sprinkles to fun dip. So snacks can be graded A, B, C, D, or F with the very best treats earning the elusive S tier ranking. The following contest is scheduled for one serving. One serving. And is for the undisputed championship of junk food, the Kringle Cup. The Kringle Cup. Let's let's talk about the box real fast. The front of the box looked like a palette swap, just like a color change from the other years. Yeah. Yeah. Not much to look at there. It's got some Scout Elves on the front. It says the name of the cereal. It shows a blown up bowl of the uh, enlarged pieces to show the texture. I did like the back of the box a little bit, though. It had some good activities and stories on it. So that's a plus. Yeah. The cereal itself, the cereal pieces, they don't look like much. They look like every other extruded corn star-shaped cereal I've ever seen. With holes in the middle. With holes in the middle. Thank you for reminding me of that detail. There was a mermaid cereal that Kellogg's did a few years back, and it looked pretty much exactly like this. I'm old enough to remember Muppet Crunchy Stars from my youth, which were amazing. They were cinnamon sugar flavored star cereal. These look like the baby food that you just like pour out. Oh, they do. They look like the little Gerber puffs. Did did you know that 
child cereal has holes in the middle so that if you start choking on it, you can have a little way to breathe. Wow, I didn't know that. That's a great fact. Life lessons with Liss. Life lessons from Alyssa's Candlecast. Yes. So what did you think about the smell of these? That was actually something that I didn't mind too much. It smells good. It just smells like vanilla. Yeah, it smells like a little bit of vanilla. Not like a super buttery vanilla like the sugar cookies, just like a straight up vanilla. They said it tastes like a cool ice cream cone. I would say it smells, it smells kind of like an ice cream cone. So that's right on. Yeah. Now here's the problem. What? What do they taste like, Liz? Well, they're good. Yeah, I mean, they kind of don't taste like much, which is unfortunate. I'll say they taste like a generically sweet, vanilla-flavored sugar breakfast cereal. Nothing wrong with that, but nothing outstanding about it either. Very middle of the road. Yeah, I'm still not tasting the coldness. So here's one thing that I think puts this a little bit above just a plain old average snack for me, which is that I actually can detect just a tiny faint hint of that cooling sensation. I can feel it on my tongue and in my mouth a little bit. If I like, if I suck in air over my teeth really sharply, it feels like my mouth is being cooled a little bit by this cereal. And I will say when we tried this yesterday with and without milk, over time, the sensation got a little bit more prominent for me. It's not like it's not going to knock your socks off. You're not going to notice it. Probably you wouldn't even clock this unless you were really looking for it because you read it on the, on the front of the box. Which is what we were looking for. But if you just like, Okay, so if you leave it on your tongue, you can definitely feel it. Yeah, here's the weird thing. I get a little bit of mintiness from this, but I know there's no mint in it. We just read the ingredients, and I think that is like a psychosomatic thing because I expect a cooling sensation to be associated with a mint flavor, and the mint's not there, but because of the cooling sensation, my brain expects it to be there, and it makes it taste like it's minty to me. That's really weird. Here's something else that's weird because it's the third ingredient in the cereal, the marshmallows list. What do you think about the marshmallows in this? They're good. There's just hardly any of them and they're like smaller than the Swiss Miss ones. Yeah, these are like the little tiny Swiss Miss hot cocoa packet marshmallows. They are very small, very dry marbits. They don't really taste like anything. And legitimately, in an entire bowl of cereal, I had one marshmallow. That's how few there are. We're going to taste test. They taste like absolutely nothing. Yeah, they taste like absolutely nothing. So, Liz. What? Let's hit the bliss point. What do you think? What are your final thoughts on this week's treat? Where would you rank them on the scale from Sprinkles to Fun Dip? And do you think that they can overtake Bold Checks Mix for the Kringle Cup? B plus. B plus. Wow, that's really good. They're, they're, they're an above average snack. Yeah, that's like almost exceptional, I would say. Almost excellent. I don't think they were that good. I think I would say C plus, like a full letter grade down. The cereal itself is pedestrian, I think. It's not bad, but it's not good either. The lack of marshmallows really hurts, but I think that the extra, the bump up from C to C plus is because of that cooling sensation, because it's at least new and novel. It's interesting. Yeah, it's like weird. So do you think that North Pole Snow Cream Cereal from Elf on the Shelf and Kellogg's can take down Bold Chex Mix for the Kringle Cup? No. No, I don't think so either. That was never really in question. Yeah. So that means, Liz. What? Your winner and still reigning defending undisputed champion of holiday junk feud, holder of the Kringle Cup, Bold Chex Mix. Bold. We've got one more week of holiday snacks coming up. We'll have to see what's on deck and what can try to take down the champ. Can we just do the next, the next junk feud episode like now (laughs) you're so excited to do this next one aren't you yeah maybe tomorrow maybe we'll put it in the (gasps) can tomorrow yes how about we just try it tomorrow all right well we'll we'll see that you know what else we're gonna see about what we are gonna check about the oreo rule right now list because what as promised we have holiday white fudge covered oreos i have a small package of them here oh i've tried these like already Yeah, we've tried them already. We know they're good. They come out every year at the holidays. But for posterity's sake, one for you and one for me. These are Oreo cookies, standard Oreos, with a white fudge covering in completely enrobing them. And as expected, they're good. Very. Yeah, I think they're fine. I mean, I don't know if I would go so far as to say that they're better than a standard traditional plain Oreo. Probably not. No, I don't think so either. I think the the white fudge doesn't really detract from the cookie. It does add something. Um, but the white fudge itself is not like super high quality. So there's a little bit of an artificial flavor to it, a little bit of waxiness, but it's still good. These, these still work. Well, you can like 
see inside of it because the cream isn't filled all the way. Yeah, I'm happy we tried those. Those are good. What do you think for a score? Um, I don't know. Just probably a B. Yeah, I think probably a B, B minus, something like that. Yeah. Let's just say a B. We both give it a B. You didn't even finish the entire one. I don't want it. That's impressive. Good restraint, kid. It's important to show restraint, especially when we do a show about junk food and we just eat crap all day long. Seriously. Seriously. You know what, though? What? Here's something else that's important. What? A very important question that we ask every week. Will it deep fry? Will it deep fry? Can you deep fry this week's snack? Uh, And I'll tell you straight up, no thanks. Nobody is going to be deep frying North Pole snow cream cereal with marshmallows. Nobody wants it. Yeah. We have seen deep fried cereal pieces before. This one is just not inspiring enough for anybody to want to do it. I could not find a single reference to anybody deep frying elf on the shelf cereal on the internet. Yeah. You know what I could find though? What? A segment list. What is it? It's time to check out the back of the box, a weekly segment where we play a little game. Alyssa, would you like to play a game? Yes. This week's segment is returning favorite, Alyssa Explains It All. An all-time favorite. On Alyssa Explains It All, I, an old, ask Alyssa, a child, about an item of youth culture that I don't understand. And this week on Alyssa Explains It All, Liss, I heard a word. What's the word? I want you to tell me what it means. Okay. After I tell you what I think it means. The word is, Liss. What? Something that you say like all day long. All day long. Slay. Slay. Yeah, just like that. I think this is seasonally appropriate, don't you, Alyssa? Why? Well, because the word is slay, dear. And so now I'm a bit confused because I hear you say it during the holidays, but also not at the holidays. It's a thing you say like all day, every day, you and your friends all the time. It's like a generic response to just about anything. Good morning, slay. How was school? Slay. I'm hungry. Slay. Does that make (laughs) sense to you? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Your friends even say this to me when I see them. And to be honest, it has me very confused. (laughs) Slay. Yeah, so here here we go. Based on all of that context, and in the spirit of the season, here's what I think that it means. Are you ready? Yeah. It's the holidays. Santa Claus is coming to visit soon. Liz, you've seen the movies. You know how he gets around. Yeah. Yeah, so I think when you say slay, you're like really celebrating the fact that something cool is about to happen, just like when Santa Claus is going to visit you on a sleigh and you're getting ready for it. So it's like you're so excited because Santa's riding his sleigh and you want to share the feeling with everybody around you. It's like you would say that instead of saying like, let's go, like, let's get on this sleigh. I'm ready. Slay. Here comes the sleigh. Get on it. Slay. Dad, guess what? What? No. Oh. What? Really? No, I thought that was pretty close. It's like Santa's sleigh. You're excited for Christmas. Um, no, not exactly. Oh, boy. Sleigh is like, it's actually in the dictionary. Slay is in the dictionary. Yeah, like you could look it up. I mean, I hope so. It's a real word. It actually does mean a real thing outside of this context. Well, in this context, Uh it's like basically if you were to be excited and you're just like, oh my goodness, that's such a slay. Right. So how's that different than what I said? (sighs) Because you're talking about like Santa's visiting on his sleigh. Yeah, which I'm excited for. Okay, so then you could say, slay, Santa's going on his sleigh. I can't just say, Santa's going on his sleigh, like that, like you do it? No. Okay, how about this? What? Happy holidays, Liz. Slay. Slay queen. Yeah, so when you say slay queen, are you talking about Mrs. Claus? Okay, let's move on. (laughs) This podcast should reach you in excellent condition, satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. If you've got a question for us, you can write to the address on the label. That's junkfeudpod at gmail.com. Liz. Yeah. This podcast has contained your recommended daily allowance of fun. Fun. For more, go to Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or wherever you choose to be social and find us at Junk Feud Pod. Stream with us on Twitch, watch fun-sized snack reviews on YouTube, buy merch on TeePublic, and fund us on Patreon at Junk Feud Pod for exclusive bites. And don't forget to catch all the snacks each and every week wherever you listen to podcasts. Until we see you again, for Alyssa, I'm Mike. Hasta lasagna. Don't get any Anya. Bye. Slay.